Now we can take a look at how we could model the other side of the thermometer. The interesting or challenging part is to figure out how could we rebuild this unit and mesh it to the geometry which we actually have here. few elements we already know. We have a rounded corner here, similar to there. So that's good to know. And we also have here a circle. That's also good to know. And then we have kind of like center lines. Before we continue, let's go to object mode, select the mesh, the scan object and go modifier at smooth, factor two, repeat five, and then right click in shade smooth. This way you see we can get rid of a lot of the noise on the surface. It shrinks the mesh a little bit, so be aware of that, but actually it makes it easier to look at. Good, then uh, we can also switch back here to this uh, rather grayish view, it's an easy on our eyes than staring at red. And how do we now continue? Before, this is like a very good process tip, before really spending a lot of time on modeling ideas, let's try to very, let's try to work very quickly and dirty. And we do something similar this time via mesh, what we just did with the annotation lines on the object. Okay, so this means uh, we have everything set correctly. Go to edit mode, select this point, go to a side view, and then press E and E. Okay, so we now mm -hmm, we can extend this one out. And we can go to the top view. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight. So eight points for a circle. Here we have actually uh, five points on half of an arc, and then three points inside. So this means with this point selected, we can say one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight. Haha, uh -huh. okay. Uh, B, select everything, go to here, and then we rotate this, move this down. Okay. You start noticing, oh, I'm actually modeling something with the rest here in mind. I have on the left side, so one point, one point, one point, one point. Okay, so I have one, two, three points here. This means, um, you know, check this out. So this we move out a little bit. So one and two, you go down. This one here, one and two, you go down. This is very, very dirty. So don't worry too much uh, over and down and one down. So they're actually inside, there they are. Okay, let's hide the mesh, maybe that makes it easier to see. Okay, now, so one F and one and one F, one and one F, they're actually, they're on my faces. Okay, so then from here to here, I can, I can bring this over and I can bring this over. And then this point, okay, this means here and here, subdivide there and there, subdivide. I also need to have kind of like these points. Okay, yeah, so four, four points, one, two, three, four, four points, four points, four points. Yeah, the system works, just only here, then I will have five points. Okay, so, Perfect, we figured out our topology. All this we can delete, select this, increase to zero, go to here, and then 
Yeah, how do we start best? We can we can try to reuse some of the work we already did so we don't have to redo literally everything. Uh, press A to select everything. Then 3D cursor. Shift S cursor at there. Wait, cursor to world origin. Okay. Oh no, we cannot rotate it. Sorry, forget this point. We will shift D and escape. We make a copy, don't move it. And then we will go mirror this along. In our case, the X direction. You see, there it is. And we can, we can move it over to here. So this way, you see, we, we modeled already this one side there. Cool. Because we did a mirror command, it chances are always very high that it flips a surface. There you see this mirrored object is flipped. So don't forget, recalculate outside. Okay, let's turn this one off here. I know, however, that for example, these points which I'm selecting right now, they're not usable. So I simply delete them. Okay, and to make sure that also we are on the correct side only, I turned the mirror modifier off. Okay, we are F uh, to patch in the face, crease, very good. And there we are. To make things a little bit cleaner, maybe we can also turn this off for the moment. So this point here with point snap, I move up, snap to there, move this up, snap this to there. Okay, and then here maybe this, uh, I move into there. Okay, not sure where those later will end up. Ideally, these I do not want to move as much because then this replicates the same uh, rounded tab. Okay, we kind of like have at least the bottom layout somewhat started. Now we can take a look at this part. So shift S cursor to the world origin, then shift A circle. And this should be a circle of eight vertices, a radius of uh, 15, not sure. Let's move this one up. There we are. We get an, a kind of interesting result here. No worries. Let's turn this off. So the mirroring. And then there we know that here, these three points we have to delete. Because then there, it makes a circle. Select a point, press L. The task now we have to do is with G and R, we have to get this into this position. Very good. So S, uh -huh. oh, what happens when we do S now? So that's the downside when we work with half of an object. So how could we now best actually scale this stuff without much of a hassle? Let me show you a little trick. We select these two points, press F, and then we can go to normal. And you see that here actually this red arrow, yeah, it's, it's all perfectly lined up. You can also select here this, press F. And then when we select this face, yeah, this actually, this works perfect. We make a copy of this transformation there. Okay. And I can select this transformation. You see? So why did I do this? Check this out. I select this edge one more time and then shift S and say cursor to the selected. So my 3D cursor jumped right to this point. Then I can press X 
and delete this edge, go back to point select, select via L this ring, switch to this uh, widget, and then here set the transform pivot to 3D cursor. There, so now when I press S, you see it scales perfectly because this is half of a model. It just scales to the geometrical center of that circle. So we can scale this this way a little bit and maybe a little bit there. Okay, so now because I moved this, I have to select these two points one more time. Shift S cursor to select it. And L, and we set, we identify that this is slightly compressed, so S and X. Yeah, maybe like this. Okay, very good. Beautiful. Now, we select this point and we do exactly what we did before. There's this one point, there is my second point, and F. Look at this. Then U, U, and U, and U, and F. There's the surface. Can hide the rest for the moment. You see how this circle now changes the shape. So we will select all the circle points and then give this a crease. Very good. Okay. Then we could say, when we go to edge select, it's actually very fast now. H H F H H F H H H H H H and F. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody who works in alias, uh, this is beautifully fast. So you see, like we uh, we very quickly create a pretty cool transition of this body going up. Just nicely arced. Now we have to see how far does this actually match also my my geometry. Mm. Yeah. No, we're not not there yet. This is this looks actually pretty cool, but it is too arced. This is a little bit flatter. Uh, here this is too linear on the left side. Okay, so then let's reset all this so we can work on these points go to edit mode go to point select and select this and then we just pull this one out and see how does this look uh, this looks good when we select this and this and this so the whole loop when i push this over can i somehow get to where i want to be so this can go lower. Whoa, there we are. See, zip. I also have the very strong feeling that this object was built exactly that way. No, that was a sip of coffee. We, this is all linear. We have to pull the points out. Can select this point and simply via the Y direction, push this out a little bit. And here, push this out. Now we have to be careful that we don't deform the surface too much. There we can see how I'm pulling this too much. Maybe this point actually does not really need to be moved that, that much. And it's always very good to um, switch or turn off the subdivision surface modifier so we can see the very basic geometry because this i do not want to be like this if only perpendicular above it nothing else so here i will try the same okay uh yeah here I will just 
since I did this for the others, I will do this too. We will probably push those back a little bit where they were. Okay, let's take a look. Z and wireframe now. Okay, so this was actually, this can indeed go in because then this really lines up. When we look here, this is pretty close. Yeah, okay, this is good. This is also very close. Yeah, just here, there we see, um, we are missing actually a little bit of the volume. Uh, I make a Alt B cut section and there we can see the volume we are missing. There it's flat and there now you can you can clearly see this. So how could we how could we get to there? Uh, let me see. Two, 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 two. One, two, three. That straightens it. We can try it this way. So I will select this face X and say only delete face. Control R here. Then I select this edge. Right click, subdivide, edge, edge, and F, and then edge, 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 and F. So I added actually, actually, as you can see, an extra um, loop cut. Hopefully, maybe this allows me to add the geometry we need. So this now, let's see. When we push this one up, Control B do a cut section through there. Now, see, I was looking for this point. So when I push this point up to do there. Cool. Okay. What about you? So, okay. You're hitting the scan mesh. You go up a little bit. Okay. Alt P. Then let's go to a side view. Let's take a look. Yeah, <laughs> mm, we kind of destroyed rather our design. So what we will, since this video now starts to take longer than I really wanted to, um, with more geometry, so one more line here and probably one line here, there's there's a, a way to to try to get this to work, but I uh, I don't want this video to be to become too long. So let's see, maybe can we get this done? Maybe we are s a simple manipulation here with the existing geometry. Otherwise, we might simply call this one good where it is. Or, uh, yeah, this is actually one thing we could try. We move all, all those points. We move up S, Z, and 0. So they're, they're in the nice line. I, tr I really strive to always have clean topology. You see they, they go in lines or in arcs. Very good. So... Let's see, uh, this flow is still pretty good. Having a, a, B, having this moved up doesn't really hurt that much, actually. And so that, that, that was a good. And, oh, look at that. We actually are getting really close to it. So this is actually the second time I'm modeling this body. And this time my geometry is even better. Again, I say this just so you know, um, also with me, sometimes it takes a little bit of figuring stuff out. Cool. Let's leave the geometry at this. We 
we actually developed a really close representation of our scan object. So if we put this next to it, yeah, that looks really good. Let's go back to this mode here and then see, now uh, you can, you can compare. Yeah, that stuff is pretty, pretty fantastic. This looks good.